On this episode of Exactly How, we're gonna show you how to tap into a trillion dollar market, how to find people to be your private lenders that you would never think would be able to lend, and how to make other people millionaires while you become a millionaire on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast-paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Connected Investors Podcast, Exactly How. During this episode, you'll discover exactly how to raise private money through other people's self-directed IRA. This is a $9 trillion pool of money that we're going to show you how to access. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com and PrivateLenders.com. Today, we have the privilege to learn from a guy who's an expert in raising private capital, creative financing, landlording, landlording, multifamily investing, and all sorts of syndications. Prior to his career in real estate, he worked in sales, but all that changed when he played the cash flow board game back in 2002 with his girlfriend, Liz. That really opened his eyes to real estate and cash flow. And he jumped in and read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, him and his girlfriend did, and they jumped into real estate in 2004 and never looked back. Actually, I think I have almost the exact same story, 2004, 2005. We might have been reading that same book at the same time. I would describe our guest as very authentic, and he has the unique ability to make complex simple. Today, he's going to explain exactly how to raise money using other people's self-directed IRAs. Matt, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. I am so honored to be here, Ross. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I see you got the American flag there in the background. Are we in, uh, are we in your office here? Yes. I got Captain America because I'm an enormous Marvel Comics fan um, and uh, that and got little tchotchkes and things I've collected over time. Um, and I, I collect flags. I've got probably... I have 15 of them all did I've, you know, 49, 48 stars, all kinds of different uh, stuff that's been left in properties we've renovated over the years. That one was left in a house that we did a couple of years ago. Nice. I remember I got a big knight in armor from a house that I, uh, that, that I rehabbed and I, I had that right by my front door. It was thick. It was, then when I got married, it slowly went from the front door to the back of the house, to the pool table room, to a great thing outside. And my uh, my knight in armor, and I named him Leroy. Leroy rusted, and uh, he's no longer with us. But you do find cool stuff in the houses, so it's awesome that you've uh, yeah, it's awesome that you found all those uh, all those flags. And if you're listening to this in the podcast, go over to the Connected Investors YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and get notifications because you get to kind of see more of the uh, kind of interaction between you know, Matt and I, and you can see his office. This is the Connected Investors headquarters right here in Wilmington, North Carolina. So make sure to go over to YouTube and subscribe to the, the, uh, our YouTube channel. Now, Matt, before we jump into exactly how to raise money using other people's self-directed IRAs, you, you contribute a lot of your success to meditation and exercise. Why do you think this has played such a big role in your success? Because you've got to, I think that you've got to get your mindset you know, right to, first of all, just to handle the, entre- the just the ways of the entrepreneur. I mean, the ways of the, uh, it, um, being an entrepreneur, there's no one telling you what to do. So there's no just boss sitting over you that's directing all of your activities. A lot of the inspiration and creativity have to come from us. Um, number one, number two, it just takes a certain amount of discipline. It takes a very positive attitude. Um, and it takes uh, just a certain, like, you've got to play a big game as an entrepreneur to be successful. Uh, you can't you can't just make it in mediocrity in entrepreneurship, and I think that um, so I'll put all that over here. The the uh, there's another just t- truth that I found is that everything is everything. Meaning like you can't just take a successful entrepreneur and have them be unhealthy and have them uh, have bad eating habits and bad exercise habits and have them have long term longevity and long term success. Right? They might fizzle and pop for a little bit they're not going to have longevity. And so I find that healthy mindset, healthy lifestyle, healthy everything um, is what is really takes to, to run the marathon of long-term successful entrepreneurship. So 
part of that is keeping your mind, your mindset right, uh, which is, you know, meditation, affirmations. Uh, the Miracle Morning uh, is a great book, and, and I've met Hal, Hal Elrod several times, the author of that. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, you know, a phenomenal human, phenomenal human being who plays at that level across the board. Uh, and also just taking care of your physical body is, is a great way to keep your energy up. It's good to take care of your, your physical plant as well, but also yeah. just uh, it, it, exercise is, is, a, is a form of therapy, is a form, of, is a form to just release those endorphins and uh, release the bad. I push my bad, th- I sweat my bad thoughts out on the treadmill, as I like to say. No. That's great. No, that's that, that's really good feedback. And you know, you said how you, everything is everything. Yeah. And there was well, there's this one quote that really stuck with me. How you do anything is how you do everything. Love it. Right. Love so it. that's why I love those words. Yes. Yeah. Getting up in the morning, little things, just like actually like making your bed in the morning. It sounds like trivial, but you're setting a good intent that you're going to do things properly from uh, from the start. And I heard, I heard that phrase when I, when it, when uh, somebody told me like, oh, if you show up five, 10 minutes late for a meeting, it's okay. It's no big deal. Right. Well, you know what, how you do every, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so uh, I would sometimes look at somebody showing up late for a meeting by being like, what's going on? What's going on with you? Why, what, what is tripping you from being at this meeting on time? Right. Because there's typically, it's not just always running a little bit late. It's like something else happened. There's a domino effect and it's never just one thing Yeah. Um, that well, I was just late. No, it's there. There could be a way bigger thing. Uh, they also say where there's smoke, there's fire. And so it's, it's, um, it's worth examining uh, when you're not able to meet obligations and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Matt, we were talking a little bit about diet there. We did a fantastic uh, podcast and YouTube show about the best diet and uh, exercise plan for real estate investors. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, just go ahead and comment below. I'll make sure to chat it over to you or you can just find it uh, by scrolling through our uh, by scrolling through our channel. So I would love to watch that. I'd love, yeah. to hear, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't, don't let the cat out now. I can't, I, but I can't wait to hear what the, uh, what is the best diet and exercise program for real estate investors? For busy. Yeah. For, yeah. For busy individuals is really what that uh, kind of, kind of breaks down to. So yeah. guys, we're, we're about to jump right into it, but remember what makes the exactly how financial freedom podcast unique is during all of these shows, we'll pull the information out of our guest's head and we'll create an action plan for you. So you can visit exactlyhow.com to get the notes of this. So you don't have to worry about writing it down while you're driving. You can also get some free gifts that uh, Matt has agreed to give you. I'll tell you about those free gifts in a little while. And also every show we give away our flagship $3,000 pre-MLS software that allows you to pinpoint the best investment properties in any location. And if you're watching this on YouTube live, visit exactlyhow.com, throw your name into the hat. In just a few moments, we're gonna announce the winner who's gonna have full and complete access to this $3,000 software. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. This is exactly how there's a very specific purpose to all of these episodes. So Matt, we talked up, um, we set the stage that we were going to show people how to raise capital for their real estate investing business, or maybe even any business, uh, through other people's self-directed IRAs. Can you define what a self-directed IRA is before we jump into the steps? Sure. So back up further, right? Because there, uh, let's let's uh, I'll bring it out of techie terms and just bring in the layman's terms. A, a uh, there there's if you've got an employee that's working for a company, let's start at that. That employee likely has a retirement account. Almost every company in America that has any more than five employees has a retirement account with their employee. While that employee works for that company, that retirement account program is called a four hundred one k, right? Um, and that means that they just put pre tax dollars into their retirement account. And over time, it builds up, it rides the stock market wave up, the, the company, if they're really nice, may do something called an a, a, a employer match, meaning like for every dollar the employee puts in, the employer may put up to a dollar into the retirement account as well. Um, and that's all well and good. Then that employee leaves that company because they find, they find greener pastures somewhere else or they move on somewhere, whatever it is. That retirement account, that 401k that they had at company A then becomes a, a IRA by natural attrition. It just becomes a, an IRA account by definition. And they get a 401k at their new company, company B. Um, and company A is, is obligated to release that retirement account to the, to the employees so that they can take it and roll it and make it an IRA. It's called IRA rollover. 
and they just take it and they can keep it with the mutual funds that it's in, keep it in the investments that it's in and, and keep running it into perpetuity. They can also roll it into a vehicle called a self-directed IRA, which means that they can take it and put it into their hands to control. Now they can't financially benefit from it. They can't invest it in something that, that if, it, if the IRA generates, pro, generates profit, that they can personally benefit from, it still becomes a, a uh, you know, retirement account. that they, you, Just like you can't benefit from your 401k's gains today, you can't benefit from your IRA's gains today. It's, it's still a tax sheltered vehicle, um, but it's now self-directed. And you as the investor can put it into all kinds of stuff. Yes, mutual funds, but you can also put it into thing. You can buy stocks directly. You can loan it to people you can buy shares of a company. Uh, I know people that own horses, H-O-R-S-E, a horse like Seabiscuit that own a horse in their retirement account. Uh, I know people that own bars of gold, physical bars of gold. Um, with their retirement account. Um, you can own intellectual property, like you can invest in patents and things like that with IRAs. Um, you know, as long as you don't benefit from it, from it personally, um, and there's a few other um, uh, excluded parties, disqualified parties that can't benefit from it personally either. But other than that, you can then take it and invest it in all kinds of things. And so uh, that's what a self-directed IRA is. And it's a phenomenal vehicle that allows um, people to, Better put their retirement account in wealth building somewhere else besides Wall Street. And bottom line, Ross, there is nine trillion with a T, nine trillion dollars in IRA accounts in this country. And that wow. number right there is why this is a is why this is a value for investors to hear. Yeah, yeah. So us real estate investors to know about. Exactly, and that money all gets to uh, accumulate tax free. Yep. In IRA. So that's. That's a huge benefit. They can so, and they can invest it in a fix and flip and and make fifty thousand bucks on the fix and fix and flip profit. Um, and if they were investing personally out of their own pocket in that fix and flip, that fifty grand would be very taxed. Mm -hmm. It would be heavily taxed. But if that's in their retirement account, it's all tax deferred. That's all wow. tax free. Um, you know, taxed when they take it out, not taxed at the time of profit. That's great. You know, I uh, taxes play such a big role. I remember seeing this graph of a penny doubled every day over 30 days is you know, many millions of dollars, yep. but a penny doubled every day, but taxed at the normal tax rate is worth like 60 grand. Yep. You know, so it's just, uh, it's just crazy how much taxes can slow you down. So that's why a lot of people it's have- It's not interest. I teach a webinar for bigger pockets and I, I reference the rule of 72. That, uh, that's, yeah. Means that if you um, invest money and you annually compound it, uh, if you take the number 72 and divide it by that interest rate that you're getting, that, that's how long it takes the money to double. Um, and it doubles up quick. I mean, you can make a lot of your investors a millionaire just to, just based on the the concepts of the rule of 72. There you go. So you can make your investors a millionaire while you're becoming a millionaire. If, if you're on this, uh, this call right now, if you have a self-directed IRA, go ahead and comment below. Let us know that how you have it, how you're using it. And at any time during this, this training, because we're about to get into some really cool stuff here, he gave me a, a brief breakdown before we jumped into it. If you have any questions, comment below. Yep. We'll make sure your questions uh, answered will point you in the right direction and it will uh, be a, a nice long lasting conversation. A lot of people learn from your comments. If you have a question, don't feel stupid about asking a question, ask the question. So, well, great, Matt. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it here. I mean, if you're looking to raise money for a real estate investment, you wanna do it through a self-directed IRA. You said there are three main steps, which are developing the pitch, your list of contacts and educating the people that are on that said contact list. So let's start with number one, developing your pitch. Go ahead and take us through that. Yeah, sure. So, um, and, and also just building your track record. In my book, Raising Private Capital, um, I talk about the importance of having a, a prerequisite, um, they're, they're, they're the prerequisites uh, met before you go start raising money. And prerequisites that, and that I talk about in the book are things like going out and building your net and um, building a track record for yourself, doing some real estate deals, um, getting clear on your goals, where you want to be in five years, getting clear on what your skill sets that you bring to the table are um, in that. So I think that uh, it's, it's really about assembling your why statement on why someone should invest with you as an investor. Um, what do you bring to the table? What are you great at? What are you able to put into it? What are you looking for? You have all that together. I'm just like a one pager. Uh, there's a, there's a um, book called the one page business plan that I recommend people use 
um, which is a good um, a, a good template. It's a book, but it also is a good template um, for uh, for assembling a plan to show investors on what you're planning on doing with their money once you get it. Uh, the one page business plan. And I'll make sure, guys, at exactlyhow.com, when you find this this episode, any book he's referenced, I've been writing it down, and we'll make sure to have a, a link to those uh, to those books. Awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, so that's that. So that's step one is you got to assemble your, uh, assemble your why statement, your pitch, get all that together. Um, because once you complete step two, um, my, my, my guess is you're going to have a lot of people to talk to. Um, well, can you, uh, for, you know, for step one, like developing a, a pitch, this one page business plan thing sounds really awesome, but is there any, uh, do you have any sort of samples there? Is there any high level you can kind of give listeners that are like, what does this mean? Like give them some sort of an idea on what they're developing. Sure, sure. And I mean, you're, what you're going to put in the pitch or in the business plan or whatever is, first of all, well, you know, I, I'm Joe Smith, the real estate investor. And I think that you need to tell real estate, invest, you need to tell your potential people that invest with you where you're going, right? So I'm Joe Smith and I want to do it right now, this year, 2019, I'm going to do three flips. And then in 2020, I'm going to do six fix and flips. And then I'm going to take some of that fix and flip platform. I'm going to start buying some rentals. Then I'm going to do the birth strategy and I'm going to buy some apartment buildings or Whatever it is, you want to paint the picture of where you're going over the next five years because those investors need to see where you're going. Because here's the thing: if they invest with you, that's where they're going too, right? Um, and you got to show that roadmap of where you want to go. And then if they hitch their wagon to you, that's that's what they're going to be attached to, right? Real estate investing is a marathon, and they need to see that that where that that you've planned out where you want to go with the marathon, and that they want to align with that, right? Um, so that's first and foremost is the goal set. Then some semblance of a track record that you can't say, hey, listen, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad on Tuesday um, and I'm looking to start real estate investing and I want to raise money on Thursday. You know, th this is um, that you need to show that you've done some hands on experience somehow in the field and on a real estate deal before you go raise money from other people. I do. I'm I, again, there's other people that might have a different belief system that I the belief structure that I do, but I do not believe that a first that a real estate deal that you do for the very first time should be with other people's money. Um, I think you should find a way to do it either with your own capital, with borrowed capital, um, with, with bank capital. There is a, there are many other sources of capital out there aside from private money investors um, or from IRA investors or whatever. So I, I firmly believe that you should find a way to do a few deals on your own before you go start raising would you consider, money. Uh, would you consider wholesaling a few deals Mm -hmm. If someone's whole, at least wholesaled a few deals, you sold a few contracts. Wholesaling is a great way to cut your teeth. You know, I mean, it's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to network. I mean, like you're going to meet buyers, you're going to meet sellers. You're going to see the ins and outs of the deal. All I would say to add on to that, like a, like a yes and, right, is that if you wholesale a deal to a flipper or a landlord, you know, buyer of yours to say, listen, I'm going to wholesale this deal to you. I'm going to ask you a crazy question. I'm, I'm going to sell it to you. It's going to be yours, but I want the right to shadow you through the renovation of that property and to see and document the whole thing. Right. So I want to see how you handle demo. I want to meet your contractors. I want to um, see your business plan for one, two, three main street and see how you do it. And if you'll let me do that, I will gladly sell you this property. Um, and that just so you can bear witness to it and, and just have a little bit of that inspiration rub off on you. Um, and of, of course, document it so you can show your investors, hey, listen, this guy, Joe Smith over here is someone who I witnessed flip this house. And here's what I learned by watching him. And here's some tools I brought and here's some contractors that I met and here's some best practices I mean, and everything like that. That's really how you get a free mentor. Yeah. Right. Stop like there. Help them and make then, money. Don't just, don't just, you know, try and get mentorship for buying somebody a cup of coffee. You know, I mean, help them make money, help them turn a profit on a deal and you better believe they'll mentor you. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, uh, that exact point, Matt, has been brought up, you know, throughout a bunch of these episodes. And when you wholesale that first deal, walk the deal all the way to the closing table. Yes. What you said that I loved was really smart is just meeting the contractors. You're building your Rolodex now. Yeah. Everybody right. you meet, get their phone number. Hey, can I get a card? Everybody, can I get your card? Can I get your card? Can I get your card? Because when you first get going, I mean, I've been doing this for 14 years, you know, as I know you have, um, then I've got a deep Rolodex now, but in the beginning, everybody I met was a new contact, was a new person that I should meet, you know, a new, a new, a new phone number to get, a new person I can call if I need something. I don't, I don't personally ask for, for cards, any cards anymore. 
but uh, I just recently moved houses and I found my old Rolodex and it was so stuffed. Every slot was taken and I had cards shoved in there and I have binders and binders of, yeah. of business cards. And so this is, this is real good. Real no, good business stuff. cards are passe now. I get it. But that's, it, it's still like, uh, you know, yeah, you can contact. pretty much take it. You, you put, you put their phone number in your cell phone and you throw the card away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, well, well, great. Anything else you want to touch on about developing the pitch before we move to the list of contacts? No, I think we nailed it. Then once you've got that down, um, then you want to sit down and ask yourself the question of, uh, it's, it might seem complicated to you to say like, well, who do I know that has an IRA, right? Well, let's back it up. What is an IRA? Remember what I said, an IRA is a former retirement account for somebody who used to work for a company. So all you got to do is ask yourself this question. Who do I know that used to work at one company and now works at another company, right? That's it. All you, I mean, and like Starbucks pays a retirement account. So if you know somebody who used to work at Starbucks, they have an IRA, right? It does not have to be your rich uncle that makes a half million a year. It does not. It has to be anyone that used to work for company A and now works for company B. The parameters, right? When they worked at company A, they really should have worked there for like five to seven years. And especially in today's thriving uh, stock market, uh, if they worked there for five to seven years and they were smart enough to invest in their 401k when they were working there, that 401k could have upwards of a hundred thousand bucks in it with stock, with the gain the stock market seen and with the contributions they made over the years. If they only worked at that company for like six months, that's okay. You know, it, it's yeah. a, I probably wouldn't even make the call because the, the 401k will not have been contributed to enough that it is significant enough to be worth talking about for your business, right? Um, making sense so far? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, it basically, you just open the universe up. Yeah. Because before you even brought up, you know, these, these key points, I was thinking, all right, who do I know that's rich, right? But it's just, it's not. It's working class people, people that have been working hard, good companies, long period of time. Um, they have, they have IRAs, they have, uh, you know, self-directed IRAs perhaps. And everyone's watching the stock market thinking, I'd like to move my money over to some real estate right now. Here's something that's interesting, uh, Ross is all they might be looking for something other to do for, and, and most people that I talk to, like they'll, they'll call me up, say, Hey Matt, I want to invest with your company. I've got 50,000 bucks in cash. I'm like, Hey, that's great. I'd love to work with you. And that, and we hear some options we can put you into. I say, and oh, by the way, well, do you have a retirement account? Oh yeah, yeah, I do have that retirement account. Like, okay, what's in that? How much is that retirement account from the job you used to have that you've moved to a new job now? Oh, I got a half a million bucks in that retirement account, right? They don't even think like, oh my goodness. Now that's, now I can create some real wealth for you with that, right? Let's talk about that, you know, and about what we can do with that retirement account. People like people forget that it's there. They just keep getting their statements once a quarter in the mail. And like, oh yeah, I guess I'll just keep that going. But they don't realize they can they can put it somewhere else because here's my my point to drive home in in the second step right and in, uh, and this is really transitions to the third step um, of the nine trillion dollars in IRA accounts that is in this country right now that's on, on the market you know what I'm just asking you just for conversation um, you know what percentage of that money is invested in anything else outside of Wall Street oh my gosh two percent three three oh yeah. close. Yeah. But so first of all, that's still a ton of money. It's still billions yeah. of dollars, right? Yeah. Um, but second, 97% of it is up for grabs. So something like, you know, 8.7 trillion is up for grabs to get put into something else, right? Um, and it's ripe, it's available, it's there, and it can easily get put into something else because it's legal to put into something else, right? Um, but the, the uphill battle that you, that we have as real estate investors is educating the people around us that the money's even available to get put because most people I talk to don't realize that the retirement account can go anywhere else aside from mutual fund, you know, yeah. and I've, and, and the, the biggest battle that we have is, um, uh, against financial planners and I'm, and they're not evil. There's nothing wrong with them, but a lot of them don't understand self-directed IRAs. So I've had financial planners tell their clients that it is illegal to do this. No, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. My, my, my financial planners hate me because I'm like all real estate and they're keep, yeah. they keep trying to get more into the market and I'm like, keep putting it in and then pulling it out and moving it over right. here. So right. Um, well, they want you, they want you to just kind of like fire and forget and get in and pay them their couple of percent each year and yeah. everything like 
that. And, they, and they'll, they'll, they don't understand self-directed IRAs and they also don't make a commission on self-directed IRAs. So they, they've had them discourage their clients from taking the money out. And so that, that is a, um, a battle that you may have to deal with that your listeners may have to deal with is their clients yeah, yeah. Um, telling people they're, they're, they're people that are looking to invest with them. Uh, having their financial planner tell them, no, 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 don't do that. You know, do you yeah. do, you do that? Or you can't invest in real estate with your retirement account, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's really good. That That's really good information there. And uh, this is why we, we bring people like Matt on the line to talk with you because this is just eye opening for so many people. You might have money, uh, your brother, your sister, you know, people might have money. You didn't even, you didn't even realize you can unlock. And so many people use money as the big, big, biggest excuse for not getting involved in real estate. I don't have money. Yeah. I don't know, I don't have money. Money. I don't I know anyone with money. money. Ross, you don't know how many people I've had tell me, I don't know anybody with money, you know? And I was like, okay, so let's have two conversations here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, number one, you do, right? And here's why you do, because of retirement accounts and because of this, because mm -hmm. of that. And if you still insist that no one you know has a retirement account or has a nickel to invest, you need new friends, right? Yeah. If that's the bottom line, you're in the wrong circle. If you because you are the some the 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 average of the five people you spend most of your time with. And if those five people, none of them have two nickels to rub together, none of them have a retirement account, none of them have anything that they could put into a deal, then you are in the wrong circle. You know? Yeah. Um, exactly. Either way, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and my well, guess is it's the, it's the former that that you just that you're not looking at, the, at things the right way. So. Yeah. Matt, before we jump into the, the third step here, I have to announce the winner of our PIN software, the <laughs> MLS software. Uh, you can locate every uh, commercial and residential investment worthy property, both on market and off market. You can find the contact data of the individuals, even if the properties aren't listed and do so much more with this revolutionary software. Actually, it even ties directly into Alexa. So you can say, hey, Alexa, find me a flip in Wilmington, North Carolina, and it will bring you back the information you need. That's how far we've taken it. Wow. And the winner of today's software is Mary Aust, A-U-S-T. Mary, thank you so very much for being part of Connected Investors, for listening to our podcast, for commenting, and uh, just now that you have this, it's usually $3,000. You get it for free. I'm going to take it from you if you don't use it. All right? That's the only caveat. If I, if I log in there, you haven't used it for three months, I'm pulling it away. Use it every day and your life will change. So, Mary, congratulations. And anyone on the line who, who entered the contest but, but didn't win, if you want to be part of our second chance drawing, go ahead and comment below. And uh, every now and then, we just randomly select someone who has commented something in one of our uh, YouTube videos. So, that's why it's important to listen to this on YouTube and subscribe. All right, Matt. So, Step number three, educating the people. Let's talk about that. Cool. So um, th that's, that's the transition point. And that's probably the biggest hurdle. And we started to allude to that um, uh, there. And in that just people just don't realize they can put this money to work uh, or how to do so. And this is actually, we transitioned from step two to step three. This is one, this is a point where I should mention disqualified parties um, that you can't take your IRA and lend it to yourself. You can't take your IRA and lend it to or benefit from or have the IRAs from people that are directly above you in your family tree. So your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your great grandparents, your step grandparents, your step parents, your parent in law, any of that, or your downline, your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids, anybody directly above or directly below you or anyone that's married to anyone directly above or directly below you in your family tree um, is, uh, is a disqualified um, uh, from, from, uh, from working with you in the, in these types of arrangements. But you mentioned siblings, my sister and I have a, have a IRA thing, uh, uh, brokerage going on, right? Like we, we did each other's thing with each other's IRAs. Um, you can do it with relatives, cousins, uncles, aunts, anybody except for the people directly above, directly below you. And of course yourself and your spouse, um, cannot, you cannot benefit, uh, from the IRA in, in any way. And you can't work with their IRAs. They can't work with yours. Zilcho and Ilcho. Okay. That's good to know. That's yep. good to know. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, the next step is once you've made that list. And I think that if you really, really look yourself in the mirror and if you really, really look at your Facebook community, if you really, really pick up this, uh, pick up this awesome networking device here called your cell phone and write down all the names of people, my guess is that anybody can come up with a list of a hundred people. Um, in that, if you really, really worked at it, 
um, on, on my webinars that I teach for BP, I talk about 25. And I was like, listen, you should be able to do 25 names in less than 15 minutes to just write them down. Um, but, uh, but then once you've got those names, then you want to assemble an education package and start, and you can, you can look online, you can look on my YouTube page, you can look wherever you want um, for data on why self-directed IRAs are amazing and how they can be leveraged and everything like that. And I just talked about the rule. Hmm? Can you, can you share some good links? Uh, can we put it on exactly how it's some good links where people can find that information, whether it's your videos or anything like that? Yeah. Well, they could just go to YouTube uh, at forward slash DeRosa group. Um, and if, if you like Ross, I can forward it to you after the call is a yeah. uh, video that I, I recorded a video explaining the rule of 72. Right. Perfect. And it's called how to make your private lender a millionaire. Okay. And that video right there explains how they work, explains, um, the rule of 72. And that is an enroll is really intended as an enrollment video for people, um, like you and me and like those listening to send to those considering investing and doing IRA stuff to say, Hey, listen, let me show you, if you have an IRA, let me show you how amazing, um, uh, and, and how uh, the, the, a technology called the rule of 72 that's out there can make your IRA, regardless of how much is in it, can turn it into over a million bucks in a reasonably quick period of time, right? That I could, that real estate investing in the rule of 72 can make you a millionaire as a, um, as an IRA investor. Yeah. So, that video is an enrollment video. And then once somebody says, Hey, listen, Joe Smith, I watched that video that you sent me. I'm in what net what's next. You got to find yourself a good IRA custodian. You want to line up with, um, there's a list of 50 of them on bigger pockets. Um, I, I would defer it to you, uh, Ross, if you guys have IRA custodians, you guys work with, with your company. Um, and there's a few that I work with as well that I, that I recommend to, uh, to people to work with. It doesn't really matter as much. It really matters on customer service on the, the fees are around the same. It really just matters that the IRA custodian understands real estate and is able to facilitate investments in real estate pretty easily for the IRA holder. So. Great. Yeah. And then, uh, that IRA custodian will have educational product. They'll have articles that you can forward. Um, they'll have data that you can send along, but really your hurdle and option number in, in step three is teaching those people around you, um, that what they have in their retirement account is available to invest in real estate. And these are the steps that you take to do it. And then once you've done that, then you set up a deal and that's really the end of step three is setting up an opportunity for them to work with you on. Um, and I highly recommend that all people that start working with IRAs start with IRA lend with IRA investors as a private loan, not as equity. Come in, let them come in and loan you the money for your deal. Let them loan, loan you the money for your construction, whatever it is you want, however it is you want to set it up, do a bunch of those. I mean like more than a dozen of those types of deals. And then you can graduate into equity later, meaning like these people start taking, equity ownership of properties longer term with you, which is way more complicated. Um, the loan scenario is, way, is much easier to put together and the IRA benefits greater from a short-term investment that has like a one year to 18 month hold versus something that's got a five year hold. And most of the time equity investments are much longer arrangements. Yeah. Well, that's a really good, uh, that's a really good breakdown there on uh, developing your pitch, your list of contacts and educating people. And guys, I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, potential questions. That's why you can comment below. Um, you can visit exactlyhow.com, visit Matt's episode of all of the uh, links and lists and resources all there for you. This way you can, you can, you can follow along. So Matt, let me, let me ask you an important question here. What do you think your life would be like if you never played that board game and got into real estate? I, so before I played the board game and got into real estate, I was a successful. I used to live down by you in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina. Can't really buy you because again, you live in a really big state. So I, um, I probably five hours from you in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I, uh, I I lived there and I was a successful salesperson um, and uh, probably would have still been, you know, would have been would have been with my wife uh, living in. Uh, we moved to, to Philadelphia and um, settled down, but I think I probably would still have a corporate job. Um, but I don't think that I'd have the freedom. I think that I'd be probably not very happy. <laughs> um, someone, would be, someone would be coming to you saying, hey, Matt, did you know you can take your IRA money and put it in real estate? Yeah, some other guy taught, it's, is teaching this, you know, the, this bigger pockets, whatever. And to be honest, though, Ross, I think I always wanted something bigger. So I probably would have found it some way. 
I probably exactly. would have found other organizations. Like I would have found bigger pockets or real estate. I think that if I had not found Rich Dad Poor Dad, I think that I would have found my way into entrepreneurship or business somewhere else. Because I firmly believe that I just was was kind of intended to be in, in the world that I'm in. I might not have been sitting right here right now. Yeah, I, think exactly. I would have been doing something similar too. Yeah, you know, they say if you take all the money away from the richest people in the world, uh, within, uh, within a year or two, they'll have it right back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, the same thing for me. Well, um, you have a free gift that you're, that you're giving everyone. We're going to have a link to it at exactlyhow.com. Can you kind of explain uh, sure. the benefit of this, of this awesome free gift? Yeah, it's a real estate lingo video. Um, I, I do this as a giveaway uh, a lot because it is something that's exciting that people, I, I think, would benefit from. It's a video that I, that I created a while ago. It's about a half an hour video. Um, and the, the, uh, the premise is, that there are a lot of real estate terms that get thrown around, like cap rate, loss to lease, EGI, debt yield, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of lingo that gets thrown around in the real estate business. And, and it's important lingo to know, um, not just because so you can act smart and use, and use big words, but because those terms are evaluating tools for pieces of real estate. So it's important to know them just so you know how to use them and leverage them in your business. But also when you talk to a broker and they say something like, well, you know, the, the loss to lease is 23% on this property. Um, it's important to know what they're talking about. Yeah. Right? Um, and it's even more important that if you call up a broker and you say, hey, what's the loss to lease on that property? A, it gives you data that you need because these are all important terms. But B, it, it helps you make sure people take you seriously because that means you know the terms that there is to know. Um, and so I, I went and wrote down all these terms that a lot of people throw around that are important ones to know in this business. And I just do a half an hour video just teaching them. And so that's what that is. It's just me going line by line. Just got a, white, got a whiteboard behind me and I just talk through the real estate terms that you guys need to know to be successful in this business. Yeah, and that's you know going all the way back to the beginning of the interview here, Matt, being able to take, make complex things uh, consumable, yeah. I think it ties into to everything that you've, uh, you've talked about today. So um, Matt, are you ready for the rapid fire portion of Bring this? Bring it on, man. Bring it on. Well, you know what? I already know one of the answers to one of these questions, but maybe you'll throw me a curveball. Um, here you go. So on a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Six. Get up early or stay up late? Get up early. How many hours of sleep? Both. <laughs> yeah. Both. Both. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how many hours of sleep do you get? Between six and a half and seven. Favorite or last book that you read? Um, well, last book I read is a book called Tribe of Millionaires. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Oh, boy. Captain America. There you go. Yeah. Something everyone should do less of. Ah, worry about the unknown. Something everyone should do more of. Laugh. Bitcoin, bang or bust? Okay. Um, bust because of the hype, but bang because of blockchain is the wave of the future. Will people visit Mars in your lifetime? Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I love yeah. that, man. That's great. I'm sad that's over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not over that. That's fun. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I'm always bummed when people say that we won't visit Mars in this lifetime because I truly believe that we're about to be, we're about to be there sooner than we think. No, it's everything, everything in life, everything that you think is miles away is going to happen way sooner. Driverless cars is going to happen sooner than we think brain implants like talking to computers is going to happen sooner than we think all of it you know light speed travel that's all going to happen way sooner than you think it will yeah it's 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 exciting so for everyone who is still on the show you made it to the end which means you actually finish what you start that is a fantastic trait it also means that matt and i uh, gave you guys some great free value here and all we ask is that you give us a thumbs up if you're watching this on Facebook, maybe a little comment if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and just interact with us. We put a lot of time, energy, and effort into these, uh, into these educational trainings to provide you tons of value so you can live the, the amazing life that you want to design. So go ahead and give us a, give us a don't think someone else is going to do it. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know what you liked. Let us know what you learned. Let us know what else you want us to 
uh, to cover, which is really important. Uh, visit exactlyhow.com to see our complete archive of all of our past shows. And remember, they all come with really awesome gifts. So you can just rack up tons of free swag just by going through all the show episodes and clicking on the free gifts. I mean, it's paperwork on exactly how to do things. It's full courses. It's, it's anything you really need to kind of get the wheels in motion. So thanks again, Matt, for coming on the show. You're quite welcome, Ross. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And for everyone else, I'll see you on the next episode of the Connected Investors Exactly How podcast. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the Property Marketplace, you'll be able to find favorite, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.